Hey everyone, so I've got a um, lot of requests and questions about this, this blog post on um, setting up Spiceworks um, with Power BI, so creating your reports and your data visualizations. I thought the best thing was just to make some videos on how to set it up, <clears throat> run through the steps. So the first thing you need to do is we need to set up the connection to the Spiceworks database. And to do that, first you have to have the driver for the database connector. So what you want to do there is go, there's a link here, head to this website, it's on this article, head to the, um, I'll put it in the video um, section as well, <clears throat> head there, find the version for your system, download and install it. So it's very straightforward, install, not even tricky, just follow the default options. Alright, <clears throat> so now that we've installed the driver for the ODBC um, connector, We'll set up the connection to the Spiceworks database. So again, you want to make sure that you're not doing this on your live database. You want to do it on the backup of your database. So this again is all laid out on the website. Um, so we have installed. We go to administrative tools. Select ODBC data source. Um, we're going to go on System DSN. Click Add. Select SQLite 3 ODBC driver, hit finish. So I'm gonna give it a name, it's gonna be whatever you want. Spiceworks, makes sense. The database name, so this is the path to the database. So like I said, you wanna be a backup of your database or a copy of your database. Click OK. We can see it here on the list now. OK, and that's it. Before we bring the, um, the data into Power BI, I thought I'd just have a look at um, just browsing the database and having a look at the query. So I use DB Browser for SQLite. There's, there's many options out there you can use. So this is, I've just opened up a copy of the Spiceworks database. Um, so from here you can just browse tables, things like that, have a look at the columns. The main one we're gonna be looking at is tickets. So I'm just gonna, um, Run the query, this query is on the website. I'm gonna paste this in here, execute it. This is pulling up um, all the tickets. I've cut this down a bit, so I just, I just don't want all the data showing. So um, I've just trimmed down some of the fields, just getting first name, things like that. I've cut down the summary just to like five letters. Um, so we're getting the ticket number, the user's name who created this, the summary, category, status, Who's it assigned to? Um, how many days it's open? When it was cre created? So this just allows you. This is you know a good way of just building your queries, getting the data you want into Power BI. You don't want to import the whole database into Power BI. It's gonna you know slow things down. You're gonna be importing a lot of data you don't need. So I recommend building the query here first before getting it into Power BI. Now that we've created our database connection, we've created our um, query, so we know what data we're gonna be pulling in. So it's time to actually get into Power BI and start you know, putting this information in and creating some of our nice visualizations. So here I've just started Power BI, just on the, on the basic page. Um, now we're gonna get, get data to import from the Spiceworks database. So we're gonna click on get data, go to more, it's an ODBC connection. Just wait for this to come up. Um, just type ODBC. Select that. Click connect. So then we select in the drop down menu. We're going to select Spicework. So this is the connection we created earlier whatever you call it, advanced options. So here I'm gonna paste in the query, just again, so we don't pull the whole database in, we just wanna put in a select amount of data. Click OK, and start loading in the data. So depending on the size of your database, where it's coming from, it can take, take a little bit of time. So here we go, so now you can see, see all the different fields, columns. Gonna click on load. And now it's pulling it all in. Give it a 
second. All right, so now we can see over here on the right hand side, there's our query with all the columns that we've brought in from the database. Okay, so <coughs> at the moment we're in sort of the um, the report view of the the Power BI. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a few changes to the columns that we brought in. So we're going to click over here next to the query and edit query, which is going to bring us to another window, the Power Query Editor. And this is this is pretty cool. A lot of stuff you can do here, and it's pretty easy to get used to as well. So we can see over here is the the steps, and this is the source. So this is if we double click here, we're going to see the query and sort of just what we set up. Um, but here we can manipulate our columns, you can add columns, duplicate columns, rename them, things like that. One of the things I'm going to do is the created column, or the created that, so the date the tick was created. It's going to uh, duplicate this before I do anything with um, a column. I recommend duplicating it just in case you know you mess it up or you do something with it. Um, so I'm going to duplicate. And the steps here is pretty cool so that you can. Once you do something, you can see the the steps to set building up here. So if you want to undo, you can just un click here and it'll bring you back to where you were. So now I've duplicated that column. I want to get, this is the date created. I want to get the day it was created. So like whether it was a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we can create some um, visual, visualizations on the days of the week and the, most, and the busiest days for tickets. So to do that, we just right click on this column. We go to transform, uh, go to day. And here we want name of day. And now you can see, so it's converted the date into the name of the day. And at the top here, I want to rename this column. Uh, rename. There we go. So I'm gonna go um, day name. Uh, what let's say? Day created. Whatever, call it whatever you want. All right. I'm gonna apply and close. Now we start adding some of our um, visual visualizations on the data. So first, we want to get a, a graph, a line chart going of the, the years and how many tickets created each month over the last couple of years. So from the visual visual Jesus visual visualizations, struggling with that word. Gonna click on line chart and then so we wanna do this on the month it was created. So we're gonna put month in the axis. We want year in the legend, so we want it split over, so we wanna show the different years, and then in values, we're gonna get the ticket number. So we wanna see the amount of tickets created each month over the last over each year. But with tickets, we wanna make sure the values we don't want it to sum it because that's going to sum up the ticket numbers. That's not what we want. We want to count. So count how many tickets for each month over a couple of years. So to do obviously what I did there, I just clicked down beside um, tickets there. You can change how you want to deal with it. So I've just selected count. So now already, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So you can see here over the last couple of years, each each year is coming up with a different color and just a different number of tickets per month over the years. So already got a nice little visualization going there. Um, from this visualization, if you want to edit this, just the format of it, you click on this little roller item and you can change things here. You can change the colors, you can change the labels. So I'm going to turn on the data labels, which we'll see, we'll actually put the numbers, plot the numbers in there. Um, what else can you do? You can change the year colors if you really wanted to be bothered with that. Turn on and off the legend. Um, you know, you can mess around, but you can give it a different name, things like that. Uh, somewhere, title, there you go. Count of tickets, so we can just put tickets by month. And you can obviously you can format the text, do all that kind of stuff. Next, we'll add a slicer. So this is like a, a date picker 
for filtering the data on our page. So we'll click on this slicer icon, add it in here. So now we want to do it on um, by the year so that we can select each year to look at it individually. So we go over here under our created at date, select year and drag this into the data field for the slicer. So by default, you can see here, it comes up with this sort of slider. Um, I like to change that. So we just click on this little icon here and we'll go to list. And this will just give us the list of years. And then we make this a bit smaller. From here, you just, once we click on one of these, it's gonna filter the visualizations on the, on the page. So you can see, you just click here, change the different years so you can just filter it down to each year. If nothing selected, it'll show all years at once. And you can hold control and click two years so just to look at different, two years at the same time. Again, with this, you can click on the little um, roller and format it, you know, change the title, change the, um, the text size and things like that. Um, somewhere title turn that on change the text all that kind of stuff so I'm just gonna make it's just a nice way for filtering down in your page um, change the text on this a little bit uh, just make it a bit bigger change that the items we make these a little bit bigger. There we go. That's what I wanted. Obviously, you can make a bold change the fonts, all that kind of stuff as well. If you really want to change the colors, things like that. Now we'll add in what's called a card, and we'll use this for to display the. Um, this is like a display label for the ticket numbers or for the total number of tickets. So we'll click on this card here. So we've added to the, the report, and then the field we want to use is a uh, ticket number. So we're going to drag the ticket the fields, and what we want to do is count the tickets. So count how many tickets there are in total. Go down, change this to count. And now we can see there are 5,862 tickets in total. So this will change once we select something from this visual visualization. So I'll select each year and this will actually change with the year. Um, so we can format this again using the little roller icon. So I'm going to turn off this count of ticket number sets category label. Turn that off and I'm going to give it a title. So I'm just going to call it total tickets. And then we'll just center that, make it a bit bigger. We can change the font, things like that. Colors, all that kind of stuff. And we'll make this. All right, so it's all already beginning to be, you know, come to another little report. The next visualization we'll add will be for um, the days of the week, the names of the days of the week and how many tickets are created on each day. So just break down sort of your busiest days. So to this we'll click on the, add this as a stacked bar chart. We want to add the, this is the um, custom column we created earlier, the, the days of the week. Uh, day created. So I'm going to put that into the axis. Uh, drag ticket number into values again and again when I click on a drop down select count instead of sum so you can see this is giving us the count of how many tickets run on Tuesday it's sorting them by the largest number here um, with this you probably do want to go in and change it's nice to change the data colors just to make them all a bit different And 
also change the title. There you go. So then that will change obviously as we select the year. And the last thing I'm going to add for this demonstration is a pie chart of the categories, the different categories and how many tickets for each category. So you may or may not be using categories with your spice box, but um, we use it in some cases. So I'm just going to select pie chart. I'm going to select category and put that in the legend. Select ticket number in values. And again, hit the drop the menu and select count. So now you can see it's given a breakdown of the um, categories and how many tickets and the percentages. If you click on this as well, it'll actually show you, put a, it'll filter down to what you've selected. Which is pretty handy. Probably could do some better filtering on your data so not to pick up, you know, blank ones and things like that. But I'm not going to do that right now. Now we have a nice little report going, um, didn't take us too long to set up, We're just going to do a little bit of clean up of it now, it's a bit messy looking so I just format a little bit. This is something that I try not to get too bogged down with this, you could spend hours you know, lining things up and changing colours and fonts and things like that, adding images and I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit, just to sort of make it a bit more appealing. So it's basically just you know dragging things around, resizing, um, you can add in shapes and lines, so I'm just going to insert uh, some lines just to split the page a little bit, and I'm going to change Change the line color, just change it to black. Add another line. Uh, so I want to rotate 90 degrees. Like I said, I'm not going to spend too long at the top, just insert a text box. Uh, make that bigger. So we've really, you know, in 10 or 15 minutes created a nice report, but we've only sort of scratched the surface of what you can actually do with um, Power BI. We haven't really started using measures or formulas and things like that, adding. So I might I might do a little bit um, of another demonstration with some, I suppose, a little bit more advanced techniques. I'm no expert in this, but um, it is kind of easy enough to pick up. So if you have any questions or comments, just send them to me or leave them below. Thanks.